Loved ones have lost their lives to this pandemic. It's disproportionately impacted people. We know that seniors were amongst the hardest hit and it's a national shame that seniors bore the brunt of this pandemic. Throughout this pandemic, throughout this difficult time, I want you to know you Democrats have been fighting for you, for your communities, for people, for Canadians. We've delivered more help to more people. Pendant la pandémie, l'NPD s'est battu pour les Canadiens, pour plus d'aide, pour plus de gens. I know it's challenging, but we're going to get through this. We are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Vaccinations are increasing. And when we start to look towards the recovery, we need to imagine what type of recovery do we want? For New Democrats, one part of the answer is clear. The recovery has to include municipalities at the heart of the plan. Municipalities have been at the heart of this crisis and have to be at the heart of the recovery. Les municipalités doivent être au centre de la relance économique. Le gouvernement doit vous donner des outils pour investir et vous permettre de créer des emplois. We also need to make sure that this recovery is one that is for everyone, not just for those at the top. We've seen in past crises that the recovery plan certainly benefited those at the very, very top, the ultra-rich, but it did not actually help people and workers. We need to make sure that's not the case in this recovery. I want to touch on infrastructure as a part of our recovery. And this is another area where, as always, municipalities have continued to deal with the struggle of having to do more with less and less. With consistent approaches of downloading more and more responsibilities on municipalities and provinces across this country. It's meant that you've had to take on more responsibility and you've got less and less resources to do uh, to respond to those responsibilities. I want you to know that New Democrats are going to are acknowledge this challenge and are going to be there for you and with you to ensure that you have the means to be able to deliver the infrastructure that your communities need. And we are committed to making sure that there is a clear plan that looks at our infrastructure as an opportunity to create good jobs, to relaunch the economy, but also to build more livable and better communities. The Liberals prefer faire affaire avec les riches investors La banque d'infrastructure. La banque d'infrastructure ne vous aide pas et vous savez que ça ne fonctionne pas. La banque d'infrastructure des libéraux ne livre pas la marchandise. Nous, on veut vous donner les ressources pour investir rapidement. We know that we've got to get down to building the infrastructure that communities need, but we know that the approach that the liberals have taken with the infrastructure bank has not worked. Report after report, including the Auditor General's report, indicate clearly that the infrastructure bank hasn't delivered resources or, or funding to get programs or to get projects delivered in communities. The only thing it's done is it's enriched the executives of the infrastructure bank. This for-profit private model of infrastructure development simply doesn't work. What we believe will work is if we publicly fund infrastructure. Public infrastructure funding is the, is the way making sure that the program is accessible, transparent, easy for municipalities to access so they can actually deliver the programs or deliver the infrastructure that they need to. Our goal is to make sure this works. We're not interested in announcements to sound good without actually having a program that works. I've heard from so many mayors that a lot of the announcements around funding sound great, but they're not actually able to get access to the funds to actually deliver the infrastructure program or infrastructure that their communities need. In addition to assist municipalities in building that infrastructure, we uh, are going to, we are committing to permanently doubling the gas tax fund. This is a tool that is fast, it delivers money rapidly and directly to municipalities to allow you the capacity to do what you need. That is something that we are committing to. I wanna talk next about housing as a part of the recovery and as a crisis. 
The thing about housing is, and as mayors and leaders in municipalities, you know this very well, housing has been a crisis before the pandemic. If I could tell you one issue, one concrete issue that was unifying across the country, no matter where I traveled, whether in Atlantic provinces, in Ontario, in the prairies, in the West Coast, in the North, in Indigenous communities, everywhere I went, one of the most pressing concerns people raised was that they could not find a place to call home, that finding a place to own seemed impossible, let alone finding a place to rent. They could not find any home. And this crisis has just gotten worse. The pandemic has actually made it a lot worse. People are unable to find a place to call home. And I think about what that means. How can a family really move forward if they don't have a place to call home? How can young people start their lives if they don't have a place to call home? It is one of those basic starting points in building a life to have that place, to have that safety and security. And the reality is so many people in our country, so many people in our communities, they can't find a place to call home. Pour de nombreuses personnes, trouver un logement ou une maison qu'ils peuvent se permettre était une crise avant la pandémie. La pandémie n'a fait qu'empirer. I think about young people and what they want to do. A lot of young people want to move out on their own. They want to start their lives. They want to own their own home. That's their dream. And what we've seen is when people can't find a place they can afford in their own communities, they end up leaving. And of course, it's an exciting thing to find a new place and to, to branch out and to go to new communities. But if people are leaving because they can't afford to stay in their own community and they want to desperately stay, that is heartbreaking. And I've, I have lots of examples, but I, I remember a teacher that I met in my riding in Burnaby, and she was practicing or she was a teacher for five years, had a great job. And I met her at her parents' home and she was living in the basement. She said, I've been living here for five years. I've been trying to save up money but there is no way for me to afford any place for my, of, my, of my own. And I'm actually seriously considering leaving this great job behind and moving to another community, not because I want to experience a new place. I want to stay here. I want to stay in Burnaby, but I can't afford to because I can't find a place to call home. I can't find my own place. And so for that young teacher to have to leave her community where she's got ties and, and connections and her family and a good job, that is, that is not. Uh, a way to build a country. That is not a bright future for her when she's got to leave her community behind. So we've got to do something about this. And the reality is we've seen a lot of words and heard a lot of words and a lot of announcements from the Liberal government. They've called it a crisis, but they're not acting like it's a crisis. It's really come down to a lot of symbolic gestures and good announcements without really doing anything to make someone's lives better. And we've got a lot of evidence to point out how bad things are in Canada and how Justin Trudeau has failed us. Under Justin Trudeau's leadership, Canada's house price to income ratio is the highest in the world by a large margin. If we ask the question, where have house prices risen the most in the world since the year 2000? The answer is Canada. Only a third of Canadians could afford to buy any type of house right now. Sure, I acknowledge after being pushed by you, by municipal leaders, Justin Trudeau created the Rapid House Initiative, but the funding is only the bare minimum. We need to do a lot more. Grâce au leadership des municipalités, le gouvernement fédéral a mis en œuvre l'initiative pour la création rapide de logements. Dans le dernier budget, il aurait pu aller plus loin. Mais encore, il fait juste assez pour dire qu'il a fait quelque chose, mais rien the signif significative. C'est une crise et il faut agir pour la régler. Now, there's no silver bullet to fixing the housing crisis, but it's going to take political will. It's going to take conviction and determination. We're proposing a multi-pronged approach. We've got to get at speculation and we've got to build more housing. We need to boost the funding for the Rapid Housing Initiative. We know this is an initiative that works, but the funding is not sufficient to actually deal with the problem. And I should also mention that the housing crisis isn't one that's direct, that's related to just one demographic. We know that young families are struggling, young professionals are struggling, people with limited income, people with no income. We need to address the entire crisis, the full range. So we need to support uh, 
support community housing providers who rapidly acquire assets like FMC has asked for. We need to invest to build half a million affordable homes. We need to kickstart the creation or the, the construction of cooperative housing, of not-for-profit housing. Make sure that we are doing everything possible to look at all options, including social housing. We're also proposing ways to help first-time home buyers. The first-time home buyer tax credit seems to be working. We want to double that tax credit to give those first-time home buyers a little extra support. We also want to make mortgages more affordable by looking at different ways to lower the payments over the years. We also need to address speculation, which is driving up the cost of housing. One of those drivers that are pushing up the price of housing is the fact that foreign investors are looking to Canada as a safe place to park their money and using our housing market like a stock exchange and placing their money, hoping for it to increase. We need to tackle foreign investment in homes by putting in a national foreign home buyers tax at 20%. In BC, that worked to help cool the market somewhat in BC provincially. We want to bring that in nationally to really provide some relief. We also know that money laundering, something that in BC, for any leader out in BC, they know is very well, well documented and, and, and well covered, not something as common or people know about across Canada, but money laundering is also driving up the cost of housing and the federal government is in the best position to tackle it. We also need to look at ways to re reduce the immense profits that ultra rich investors are making in the market domestically. So that means reducing the profit for property flipping. There are the ultra rich that are benefiting from the crisis right now and it's not fair. We need to build a housing market that's fair to the young people, young families, so that everyone can find a place to call home. They can actually afford a place. We also need to take a moment to reflect on the specific challenges faced by both urban and non-urban Indigenous people. As I said before, this crisis, this housing crisis was there in, before the pandemic, but it's only gotten worse. And it's been particularly bad for the Indigenous communities. We've seen a desperate need for housing in reserves, in indigenous communities across this country, but we've also seen desperate need also for indigenous communities living in urban settings. This is a difficult and, and very uh, hard challenge, but we have to do something about it. The Liberals promised to implement a national indigenous housing strategy, but we're still waiting. We haven't seen anything. And, and really it's leaving indigenous people behind. What we want to do is bring in a for Indigenous, by Indigenous national housing strategy, one that responds to the needs of Indigenous people. This would include properly funding a national housing center that's designed and run by Indigenous housing providers to close the gap for Indigenous housing. And I want to be very clear on this point. If the Liberals were to delay further their commitment to bring in a national strategy with an election, an NDP government would ensure that within 100 days of taking office, we would bring in this national strategy that deals with specifically urban and non-urban indigenous communities. Next, I wanna talk about climate. We, we know that one of, the, one of the challenges of this pandemic is that while we are focused on the pandemic as the major crisis in front of us, it's meant, it hasn't meant that the other crises have gone away. We still have the housing crisis, and we certainly still have a climate crisis. The climate crisis has not gone away. And we know that this is not a crisis of the distant future. You as leaders and municipalities know very, very intimately the impacts of the climate crisis on your communities, on people in your communities right now. We know that extreme weather resulting in forest fires and in flooding impact people right now. On this front, it's another crisis where Trudeau says it's a crisis, but again, doesn't act like it's one. He hasn't taken the initiatives necessary to actually fight this crisis. And we're the only G7 country in the world under his leadership who has increased greenhouse gas emissions instead of reducing them since the Paris Accord. What we need to do is fight this climate crisis like we actually want to win it and look at it as an opportunity to create good jobs. Vous êtes des leaders en matière de changement climatique. Vous avez innové et le gouvernement fédéral doit vous soutenir davantage pour vous permettre de faire plus. 
we need to offer real clear solutions. And some of the solutions that we're prepared to do that we believe would help immensely right now is to offer low cost financing for energy efficient retrofits in public buildings. We wanna support you, support municipalities in retrofitting buildings like libraries, schools, and community centers. We wanna offer municipalities low cost financing in support of the electrification of transit, other municipal fleets by 2030. We wanna support in helping municipalities make communities more resilient by supporting funding to address the impacts of the climate crisis so that you can improve pro programs and infrastructure to be more resilient in the face of some of these changes. I want you to know that New Democrats are on your side. Throughout this pandemic, we have fought to bring in more help for more people, and we are going to continue to do that. My commitment to you is that we will fight for you and your communities every single day. We have shown in this pandemic that our small but mighty team has been able to deliver real wins for people. We believe very passionately that more New Democrats will mean more help for people. We were able to double the serve, bring help for students, increase the wage subsidy, and bring in a paid sick leave all at the federal level, all with, with just 24 New Democrat MPs. Imagine what we could do with more. I want you to know that we are not going to stop fighting for you and your families to make sure we've got good health care that covers people from head to toe, fight for good jobs so that people have the ability to live a good life and to fight for a healthy environment. We're going to continue, in, as always, to fight for justice and human rights. We will keep on making sure that Parliament works for you. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Singh, for taking time and sharing your ideas with us today. I've said it before, it really is so helpful to be engaging with a full slate of national party leaders at this conference. The NDP has been an important voice for municipal priorities. So thank you, Jug, for sharing more of your vision here today and for always making FCM a priority. And thanks for staying with us now to continue the conversation. And where I'd like to start is with housing. Obviously, many municipal leaders have been preoccupied with helping vulnerable people who've been facing this pandemic from, from the early days, we were turning arenas into COVID safe shelters, but then we found ways to deliver more lasting solutions, like the Federal Municipal Rapid Housing Initiative, where we're turning available buildings and land into permanent affordable housing. The RHI works because it directly empowers local leaders to assess local needs and to deliver on those needs. Now you've told us about the NDP's ambitious new affordable housing plan. And I'm hoping you can say more about how your plan would directly engage our frontline local expertise to turn ambitious targets into homes for people. Well, thank you. I just wanna first of all acknowledge that uh, in many ways, and you mentioned this, uh, that, that some of the best solutions are going to come, Darren, from working directly with municipalities. Being on the front line, being direct uh, in people's lives, you have some of the best capacity to actually deliver the help that people need. And we saw that with the Rapid Housing initi Initiative, your ability to move quickly, to innovate quickly, to come up with solutions to help people out. Uh, the innovative solutions you came up with to deal with the crises of this pandemic have shown another, in case folks needed more proof, of the ability of municipalities to adapt quickly and to get, get things done. So uh, we want to partner with municipalities to deliver on this promise of building more affordable homes. We know that there are uh, lands available, federal lands available that municipalities could access to, to deliver more housing, that they need funding to uh, improve existing housing stock, some of it which will, uh, with because of year over year deterioration, needs immediate remediation. So we want to work directly with municipalities to help deliver on our commitment. What we want to do be is very flexible. And, and what I don't want to do is what we've seen in the past where there's announcements made of funding available, but municipalities don't know how to access it. And I, I've met with mayors frustrated who want to build housing, who want to make this a priority, but simply aren't able to access the funding. That to me is completely counterproductive. We need to make sure that any program that we bring forward is one where municipalities are able to access it quickly, it's transparent, it's clear, and it provides enough funds to be able to move forward with initiatives to build more housing. The goal has to be, we need to do whatever it takes to build the homes that people need so they can find places to call home. Excellent, thank you, Jagmeet. My next question is about unlocking more of the incredible potential of rural and remote communities. 
As you've seen, SCM is working hard to elevate rural priorities in inefficient auto, and we've seen some real progress here. Major broadband funding, the first ever rural transit fund, direct investment in small community climate adaptation. We're heading in a good direction, but obviously there's much more to do. So my question is this, what's your vision for empowering rural communities to thrive right across the country? Well, well, broadband has to be a part of the, the solution and a major part of it. We, we know that in this pandemic, it's really exposed the digital divide. For people that had access to high-speed internet, working from home, kids going to school from home was, was tough, of course, but it was something that they could adapt to. But for people that did not have high-speed internet to begin with, it just made what was already a divide even worse. It became a chasm. So a commitment of ours as New Democrats is really to make sure our entire country has access to high-speed internet and means having the political conviction, the determination, and the will to actually make that happen. And that's going to require building that infrastructure. Uh, another piece for rural communities, something that we were all shocked by the devastating news of Greyhound shutting down, which was a massive blow for rural communities. As a kid that had relatives that I visited in, in far off communities. Uh, I used to rely on the Greyhound all the time to be able to connect with my cousin. And we spent summers together and spent a lot of time together. Uh, without the Greyhound, Greyhound, it wouldn't have been possible. So right now for a lot of communities, they are left very displaced. They do not have a way to get around. So we're pushing, the federal liberals knew that as soon as Greyhound is making that announcement, they knew that this would be a serious blow to rural communities. They really didn't do anything. We're pushing for a, a publicly funded inner city uh, intra-city, between cities, uh, bus program that we can actually provide uh, a connectivity between rural communities. Uh, it's a way for communities to be connected, but also important for uh, economic development. If communities can't move around, if you can't get from one to another, this is uh, a missing link in, in the ability to unlock the full potential of rural communities. Uh, we need to invest in infrastructure, we need to invest in transit, and we need to make sure we invest in in uh, access to the internet. Those are some of the key pieces of unlocking the full potential of the rural communities. Thank you, Jagmeet. And we look forward to continuing this conversation about rural Canada. I'd like to return to a question that we put to the PM yesterday, as well as to the leader of the official opposition. The federal municipal partnership has been critical in this pandemic, from delivering frontline services in crisis to, to delivering housing to people facing homelessness. This experience has once again shown what can be done when we work together directly with clear shared objectives. It's the same reason the gas tax fund has worked so well. So my question is this, how might a Jagmeet Singh NDP government work with other orders of government to really unlock expertise and potential of local governments? Well, Darren, I appreciate the question. I've said before, I really believe this, that municipalities have to be at the heart of the recovery plan. So we've got an opportunity right now moving forward out of this very difficult time where we felt a lot of pain, businesses have been, small businesses have been hard hit, people, workers have been hard hit. We have an opportunity in this recovery to fix that and to, to relaunch an economy even stronger than before. And to do that, to, to have a really meaningful recovery plan, municipalities have to be at the heart of it. So that means making sure you've got the tools to invest and create jobs. We need to make sure that we're, we're investing and supporting municipalities in in, in their ability to deliver on, on that local job creation. As stated before, I really believe that one of the key things is to give municipalities the means to actually deliver the programs and the infrastructure that they need to deliver. And that means being additional sources of revenue. And we've talked about how the gas tax fund has worked really well and that doubling it would be very helpful. We wanna actually make that permanent. A permanent doubling of the gas tax fund would create long-term, sustainable, predictable funding, direct funding that's rapid, it's quickly into the hands of municipalities so they can actually deliver on investments to help us in the recovery. I think it would provide, it would provide uh, assistance in electrifying transit, adapting to the climate crisis, and fighting homelessness. That's one of the key ways I think we can work with municipalities is empowering municipalities, giving municipalities that, that power to deliver on the programs that they need to deliver. Excellent words for us to end on. Thank you so much uh, for what you're bringing to the conversation, Mr. Singh. And thank you for joining us this morning. We look, forward to we look forward to continuing the dialogue with you on the road to a strong nationwide recovery. I also want to thank everyone for joining the session today. So far, we've heard 
three of our national political leaders. We'll meet Green Party leader Anime Paul tomorrow. And there are such important points as we continue developing our own municipal roadmap to recovery. 